Evening, folks. I'm Nick Tucker, and this is the Historical Fencing Guild. Before we get going, I need to pay some bills, unfortunately. Well, fortunately, because I have the opportunity to do so. So the Historical Fencing Guild, like all my programs, is made possible by Joe Bachman over at bit.ly slash jbtechapps. He is the creator of the Indie CD, the Independent Creator Directory, which is a sort of white pages for independent authors, artists, coders, sword masters, game designs. Um, so if you're looking to hire people or you want quality work and you want to be able to shop small, it's a great one-stop shop. It's also a wonderful place if you are... Uh, an independent creator who wants to get your name out. So please look that up. Uh, right now he's charging a very modest one-time fee to set you up with a page. It is an incredible deal, and he's only doing that to help keep the lights on and afford uh, uh, domain names. We're also made possible by all my book sales, but as this is the Historical Fencing Guild, uh, The Simple Sword the Fighting Axe, and the Simple Spear. The ongoing Simple Sword series is three, likely to be uh, at least one more by the end of this year, uh, books to help you learn at your own pace how to sword fight and learn the, the ways of using assorted weapons in training and safety for any number of applications, including historical reenactments, LARPs, things like that, because I believe that martial arts are for everyone. And with that said, we're going to get into a bit of the news. Let me put that banner away, because normally we have a whole lot of comments, but it looks like my evening crowd is a bit busy. Being Friday the 13th, I am not surprised, and that is not the correct banner. Let's see, is that the right banner? Yep, there it is. All right. Well, no, that's not the right. Why is it doing that? There. Uh, you can also support me on patreon.com slash the historical fencing guild. Now that we've gotten all that out in the first two minutes and no one's here, it's very surprising. We have some stuff to talk about. Um, we're going to do, do, probably do a quick trip over to the uh, Purple Heart Armory because I've heard tell that they may have some new stuff and I haven't checked their daily deals. Uh, we're also going to talk about something that CRKT, the Com Columbia Knife and Tool, uh, Columbia River Knife and Tool, has put out as a trainer that's fairly um, revolutionary. Sorry, I just heard the front door open, so it's a little odd at this time of night. But we, we also have two submissions for the six-second challenge. For those of you who don't know, the six second challenge was in response to, I'm sorry, a uh, a D and D aficionado who had problems with the number of attacks that a fighter class character, a martial class character, could do in six seconds, and was inquiring if it was accurate, if it was something we could do. So uh, he asked for HEMA and other types. I happen to know a large number of such people. So we are hoping to get that out there. And uh, I shot a little video. Actually, I did it live here for my first one. And I rather damaged a chair, but um, I got 14 hits in six seconds. Possibly more. My count was a little off. So we know at least 14 hits could be struck. Now, uh, I'm going to take just a second, and since it's quiet, I'm going to move this to a new window. Go PHA. Now, if you go to uh, Purple Heart Armory, uh, whoops, you will find that our uh, point, there we go. The link I have in the description is my affiliate link, which will allow me to get a small percentage of anything you purchase, which really helps us at the end of the day. Click here and do this so I can see a little better of what's going on. Um, so we're set up to do that, and we are set up. We should be able to run the videos of uh, Foxy and Thesis's uh, six-second challenge. 
We have a couple of chats, so I'm going to uh, address those real quick, and then we'll get into our stuff. Uh, thesis, first of the door, our home net crashed, so I'm watching on my phone. Oh, I am so sorry that that happened. And we're joined by Cindy Kett, who says, uh, well, hello there. Hello, Cindy. And she begins plugging my books and things at Amazon.com slash store slash Mr. Nicholas Anthony Tucker the second. That's all me. <laughs> you can get not only the Simple Sword books, but uh, the Big Stumpy Robots tactics games and novels, and my latest uh, book of fantasy and a little bit of sci-fi fiction, Art and Tales, where uh, micro short stories and custom artwork go together from little prompts I came around. This is a, a really nice white size adventure into different worlds. And I have some people petitioning me to do uh, elaborate on a few of these, Tur turn these little short stories into more complete works. So if you read that, let me know ones you wish you could explore more. Uh, and Cindy says, go to the Historical Fencing Guild Friday nights at 7 p.m. Central, 8 p.m. Eastern, right here on the Historical Fencing Guild channel. And be sure to hit like, be sure you're subscribed, and please share this around. If you don't want to miss anything, please ring the bell for notifications. I find Nick's art uh, at uh, nickdeviantart.com slash nickt. That's right. And please don't forget to tip your host. Yes, if you are so inclined that you wish to generously give money for me to help uh, maintain my status of reviewing and teaching people, well, that can be done through paypal.me slash Nicholas Talker. Anything given to me will be privately or publicly. Um, may I'll be gra grateful, and I will ex uh, talk to you about that. Oh, I also have to turn my uh, phone off because I'm doing the stream, and you guys deserve my full attention. Now, let's get back to the comments. I, it doesn't look like we're missing anything. Cool. So what we're going to do is uh, we'll start off with, uh, I'm going to do, I'm setting up to make sure everything works smoothly because I realized I have to do something. That, we'll hit that, and then I can bring that up as needed. But this, oh, this is an important one. Uh Yes. Whoops. The... Help out a pastor who's being kicked out of his house after being told he could stick around for a while. GoFundMe.com slash F slash uh, those letters and moving expenses. Please go to that link. That is my business partner and a dear friend, uh, Luke Stone. He's a law. He, he <laughs> mostly survived COVID in that he was dead for a while during the darkest part of it, and uh, he, he, his church collapsed basically, and another church acquired the the home where he was living as part of his job. They claimed he'd have another year. Wrote a, wrote a document, uh, then deleted the document and put a fifteen day uh, eviction notice on his door. So he is somebody who's trying to help people. He's trying, you know, he's a comic creator. He does a whole lot while trying to be, just be a good man, and he has been hit hard. So anything you can do to help them would be greatly appreciated. And yes, uh, our our friend Go, uh, GoFundMe.com slash F slash Love for the Hales uh, is another couple hit by uh, COVID who are some $30,000 in medical bills so please, anything you can give there as well. Yes, I know I'm asking a lot of you, but a lot of people are suffering. But since it brought up Purple Heart Armory, let's go through what, what we've got here. We'll do a little fun going into 2023 sales. Come here. Let me see if I can use my magic do doodle knob. I can. Yay. All righty. Let's hit the new and upcoming and see what's coming down the pipe. Um, I am rather interested in this Gorget 
because it is an articulated gorget. I am not sure about the closure. I wish we had some more more pictures that highlight the back closure because I find that interesting. But neck protection is so vital. I will be doing what I can to uh, do a video, assuming I can get my hands to work, on building a simple gorget. That is in my 2023 uh, slot of folders. Now, I will be behind on some of my work for the next two weeks due to the fact that uh, a couple of the meds related to treating my nerve condition, uh, I have severe neuropathy and it causes numbness and paralyzation of my hands and feet and pain uh, because of some of the side effects of things. My, my meds are uh, in shortage, and they won't be able to get them to me probably any sooner than the 1st of February. So my crafting and some of my display videos may be delayed as I am having um, flashbacks to when my hands were a little worse. Oh, we're joined by Kelly Carlisle. Hi, Kelly. She She's a wonderful author who uh, is doing a book called well, has done a book called The Rembrandt Stratagem, which I'm going to enjoy reading. Uh, I don't have her prompt set up for this room, but how are you? One great thing about this channel is, and I'm going to go right back to where I was about what's new, is that uh, we, uh, we provide combat information for authors and help them work through scenes who want a little more historical accuracy, or just a way to mix it up. Uh, we have... Oh, this is a piece I can't believe they're doing, and I think you will find interesting, in that the Gunderot... The Gunter... Gunterot... Because uh, that looks like Gunterot. Sword Axe Trainer. This has been seen. It is a period thing that happened. And it's very silly, but our good friend Christian Dorst has made one for the uh, use of uh, Hema sparring. So you guys could try that out and see what you think of it. I think that's delightful. I really love the more uh, uh, esoteric weapons that are that are done that people can learn. And it's also great for establishing character personality. Uh, acupuncture is very helpful for pain management. Um, we'll have to see how that works. Hello, everybody. Hi, Dr. Nick. I am not a doctor. <laughs> but I wanted to see what was coming down the pipe. Oh, I mean, hello, everyone. What am I thinking with the question mark? Hope you gals and guys are doing... I, I think so. It is uh, Friday the 13th, which is always a, a pretty good day for me. Uh I apologize, my voice was cutting out during, uh, never mind the further more this morning, as I have not been sleeping terribly well. If it starts to, during this program, I'll cut it short before I become a squawk box. But we seem, excuse me, we seem to be holding up pretty well. Um, we've looked at these. Let's hit the deal of the day proper, and we'll see if there's anything else. Uh, and, and there's always room for doubt. We all make mistakes. We've got some... Oh, they're sold out. Uh, I don't know if that has puncture resistance. It's not li listed. And it is much too small for me, so... Okay, his, his deal of the day is rather low. I'm kind of surprised. He must have cleared out some stock around Christmas time. Now we'll go to our favorite place real quick. Basic trainers. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Speaking of rewriting scenes, I finished the rewrite for Suitable Arrangement Siege. Wonderful. Finishing the Tales draft is on hold until I finish The Laundryman, a story about a Chinese gent in the Old West. How delightful. Um... Is that part of that anthology I hear that's kicking around uh, Spurs and Six Guns, or is that something else you're doing? Because I do love keeping track of my author friends. I mean, I'm an author too, but... Um, people looking for a basic sword trainer, I really can't 
uh, oversell just how nice this is. If you don't know what you want to do, but you want to buy equipment, this is a basic trainer. And at, at its price, which has actually kind of come down a bit, I uh, I can't I can't oversell it. This is a great little trainer. The only thing he has not managed to get is something equivalent to the rapiers I found. Oh yeah, it, yes, it is for for uh, spurs and six shooters for, from Stormgate. Excellent. Perhaps in twenty twenty three I will do more uh, applying for anthologies, but. I know that some folks have been looking for very specific uh, different trainers, and I do love being able to reference some of these, especially for people. I like these because they're low cost and they uh, they are low weight. So those of us who have uh, grip limitations and financial limitations can usually find a trainer that can fit and might be somewhat... Um, orthotic um yeah i'm kind of tempted actually by the bonificio because that slight curved grip um mirrors the sword of both charlemagne and count dooku and that subtle curve is supposed to be more uh more comfortable what is the sizing i want to look 15 inch blade. Okay, so that's still well within the deck. That makes it a little pricey for a dagger. Not bad, but just a touch. So we, we need to look into that now. Um, I'm trying to think. I need to know what kind of gear you guys are, are feeling you want me to focus on as we go into this, this new season of uh trainers. Um I will say I am very concerned about the Crow, Crow Bill Axe Trainer because this style of weapon, basically a mini scythe for anyone who really wanted that energy, uh, puts a tremendous amount of force on a point like that. And that it does make me a little dubious. And at 60, that's pricey. But um, I'm hoping we can get a uh, Foxy and Thesis to give our give their review on these because uh our friend foxy lee received a brace of these lovely deer horn knife trainers as a way of trying to find a, a weapon that fits her fighting style and it's very important that you find and try things that fit your fighting style now if you are financially in a place where uh, a weapon like this or a trainer like this is not quite available. Um, you can basically do your best to eyeball it by the, by the dimensions and simply cut one out either out of a cutting board, which is basically HDPE and will work just fine, not as long as some of these perhaps, or even simply cardboard or um, close-up foam like you would find in a uh, yoga mat. But you'll have to do a little bit more work with that to, to stiffen it up to work. However, I'm really interested to hear how those are uh, working for her. That's on one of my, my sets of questions to ask. Uh, basically, as a little thing, if there's something you ever saw on Forged in Fire, it's probably here. Oh, wait, so we have a response. So far, she's really liking the trainers. You can see a bit of her form in the challenge video from last week. Well, if ever there was, let me just do this. If ever there was a point to do a transition, let's look at that video. I should have it where it can be aired. So I'm going to do this to make it where I can see it a good deal better. And I am going to go in brand. And I have already uploaded these guys. I was supposed to be. It did not work. That's okay. That is a-okay. We have ways, my friends, of making things work. Now, uh, 
we're going to go here like this. We're going to go here like this. Give me just a second because I'm finding some mild technical difficulties. I thought I downloaded those already. Let me see. No, they did not. Uh, they simply aren't showing up. That is fine. What I will do then is I will come here. I will go uh, so we go here. I'm, I'm going to get this fixed. Give me just a second. And I'm going to see if I can get this to work. Um, we'll see if we can get that up because they were supposed to upload and instead it uploaded a video of my cat. Stuart's doing his part of the war on pumpkins. Are you? Yes. Yes, he is. Um, so the video of Stuart and his war helping on the war on pumpkins is definitely a thing. Let me get into the drive. Do, do, do. My, my apologies for the slight delay. Feel free to talk amongst yourselves. Thought I was going to go to the drive. Drive. And now it simply isn't. Okay. Uh, you know, we'll say stop sharing. We'll get this fixed because this is being very weird. There we go. Circle goes round and round. Unfortunately, with my internet being of dubious quality, we have some problems like that. So while I try to get that re-uploaded, I knew I was having difficulties. Um, we're going to talk about a few things. I have an ongoing list of videos that are coming in the near future. I have to do the great gathering of my favorite uh, back scratchers as trainers because people want to see that. Um, we're going to do a before we uh, re-upgrade the uh, outdoor fighting area, as well as gardens, um, in a probably a couple months, because right now we're in approaching the really nasty, sudden, cold time, at least traditionally, uh, in the part of Indiana where I live. But what what are you guys looking for? I, I know that uh, getting in shape and getting back in shape is going to be something we all have to work through. And I do want to remind you guys, while I wait for responses on things you want to discuss, that to get back in sword form, you have to start from the ground up every time. People don't like to admit it, but it's the best way to do it. You safely start your stretches. You uh, Let me see so I can get to the video. I think it should be in here. No, that is the ad for the Madagascar Cheerleader. I'm in the wrong. Uh, the Madagascar Cheerleader is a book by Carl Witzman. Ah, uh, six check at six second video. Let me go here. And I'm going to say open with. Oh, no. We go now. Let me shrink this. And I'm going to come here, and we're going to try to get this to work. We are experiencing technical difficulties. It, basically, my computer's been a nightmare since this last update. Let's see what this looks like. Excellent. This should be visible. And we will start this up. And let's see. The six-second challenge, we got 13 seconds. Featured centered is our own uh, Foxy Lee. That sure sounded like 15 to me. Looks like Foxy got 15 shots off. Now, they were light. She's just learning. But this is this is akin to a flurry of blows. So, um, 
I I, th I think with a bit more training and practice, it will go faster, and she'll be able to hit the target harder. But of course, this is very much an improvised thing. That's part of the uh, the fun. Very very Wing Chun. Yo, I want to watch that video again. I'm gonna do this. I want to see what she does. That's a, that's a good rhythm, though. That was because she's watching the clock, but that was very much like a speed uh, a speed drill for boxing. That is fascinating. All right, I, I like that. Let me see. Do we have? Yes, we do. Again, it sounds like about 14. Let's count that back off again. One, two, three, four, five, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, fifteen. So thirteen. Ah, uh, I like that. Oh, I like that. Uh, problem solving a scenario from different perspectives, uh, a solving a scenario from different perspectives of different styles. Oh, that's delightful. I like that. Uh, we definitely can do some things there. Um, target was moving around a bit. I think it was around 18 hits. Like I said, I'm just here going by the ones I hear. So we'll, we'll go one more time just to check my count might be off. Yep, I keep hitting 13. That's a good start, though. And you're you're using some moderate speed. We can build that back up. Uh, and this is the beginning, guys. This was unprepped. Part of the trick of this particular thing will be how we... Uh, how we build up from there. Do we get faster? Do we get stronger? Let me adjust a couple things so that I don't need to see myself as well. I need to see your comment. Uh, so getting back, I want to get back real quick. The target was rebounding. I think it was around 14. Like I said, I'm going by ear. And uh, I also... I could tell you weren't straining your speed. That's one thing I like about your performance thesis. You were just, it was a very calm pop, 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 very metronome. This was controlled. This wasn't, you know, m more like my hyper aggression. This is how I beat a chair to death with a stick. Uh, and I need in the near future to do a proper video version of that. Uh, in stance with, you know, assorted weapon styles. So we'll probably visit that anew in a couple weeks. Uh, uh, Cindy Cap brings a great point. She says, based on my recent observation, that is what is normal in one style is absolutely not allowed in another. Yes, um, we're going to talk, we're talking about the basics, we're talking about the base stuff, uh, crossing your feet while fighting, crossing your legs. Uh, most of the schools of classical fencing, at least at the beginner level, take that away. Some religiously hold to it. Now, the more inclined to the strip, to linear fencing, dancing, uh, the more likely you are to, to hold to that. However, when you start fencing in the round, uh, either an open ring or uh, an open area, you're far more likely to end up crossing your legs. Uh, my approach is to take as much away as possible so that uh, 
as you you are learning you you are learning from the broadest safest stance you don't need additional perils and with many people they do not know their left foot from their right foot i'm not being facetious i'm not being belittling uh it's part of the reason why armies train people to march knowing how to move and where your weight is centered is crucial because everybody who wants to sword fight wants to jump straight to sword fighting it's like no first we have to work on how people stand then how they move then how they attack in more advanced fashions then we worry about stuff but in other systems um the crossing of the legs a dramatic uh body movements happen very quickly uh, because I dabbled in Tai Chi and a few other styles, I can, you know, I have to say, I will teach you the basic, this is the basic fighting stance. When you find your fight, you may do other things. At some point, you will not, you will see me and you'll, you'll ask, and they always do, wait a second, you don't move like we do. Are you holding something back? And to tell the truth, I am. I'm holding two advanced things back. One advanced thing is my ankles, the bones in my ankles are bent and I have one leg shorter than the other. That means biomechanically as an engineered biological structure, I move differently. Secondly, I have done Eastern styles and kicking styles and different things. So I am intimately aware of where my point of balance is. And that means occasionally I will cross my feet uh, because I've studied Spanish. You will see uh, trans traverse steps. And um, what I have found is a, a, a split in development after a while where either your form is incredibly fixed. And I love people with fixed form because very easily, especially if they're um, European Fencing, fencers, I can figure out how they're going to move by how they stand. Um, are they in a very, you know, my, my Giganti is a laid back style. Giganti, your, your weight is centered and just a touch back. Whereas Fat Abris is very forward. You are leaned way forward and in to get the extra reach and kind of angle off the attacks to make it harder for the squishy bits in hopes that a shot hits is deflected off the ribs. Uh, there's a lot of body mechanics, but it affects your balance, and you have to maintain a very wide leg base. Um, Fiore is notorious for having the offhand in this backwards position over here, or or up here. You know, there's, there's, there's this... It's almost much like a, a boxer's... Head block. The hand does things in Fiore. Uh, these little tweaks. If it's way back, you have a, you have a classic uh, Agrippa or um, more of a strip fencer. You watch. Is it cocked up? Okay, they fought Epe or Foil. Is it down on the hip? You're dealing with a Saberist. Look at how people move. And if you study the different styles, just visually, you watch sparring and such you will see uh that but just like swordsmanship is remarkably like calligraphy and i can see why especially the japanese were so fixated on that um if you're learning to write and we're going to use european uh you know americanized calligraphy a bit more than uh you know japanese because it would be Real complicated, real fast. But first you learn block lettering. Very simple, very clear letters that you can repeat ad nauseum so that your writing, reading and writing is legible. But block lettering takes time and puts a lot of strain on the hands. Uh, cursive is far more elegant. It, uh, it flows. And it's more telling of your personality. Cursive is the 
you know, part of a penmanship. It is refined. That's something people really should occasionally think about, in my opinion, because you have to study it. And it's 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 there's much more motion in in the writing of cursive than there is in in you know your basic uh, block lettering. Although you'll you'll see variants later. And then you get to true calligraphy, which is tr literally an art form. The, the letters are precision shaped, uh, oftentimes using specific tools. The spacing and cant and kerning are all very thought out. And it's usually, it's much slower, but the result is truly an artwork. But you can't jump to calligraphy. You have to learn your letters first. And what I do is I believe in, I'm going to teach you the letters. I'm going to start you into some cursive. I'm going to show you different styles of calligraphy. And when you figure out where your cursive leans and the way you do your block letters, you can pick what style of calligraphy. That's my approach to uh, uh, learning. And yes, oh, absolutely. From your experience, there's way more crossing steps in Chinese martial arts than European. There's also a whole lot more kicking. In the vast majority of uh, European weapon styles, it's really uh, the weapon with an understanding of wrestling. For uh, literally, for centuries, going on millennia, you learned basic wrestling from your family, and you learned uh, perhaps some type of hand-to-hand, -hand, either fisticuffs, but more more wrestling, and then you added weapons to it. And the European model, the legs exist to keep you upright and mobile. There isn't a lot of kicking. I'm not sure why. I mean, it exists. You'll find kicking in... Uh, any number of of uh, early European styles, but the primary is upright. This is why boxing is still very a thing, uh, even though boxing was actually banned. Fisticuffs were banned in its t teaching in Germany for a while because they decided that it was too dangerous. It was too ineffective in real combat so that it was dangerous to teach it. So um, that gives us questions. It gives us options. So how does that factor in? Well, if you're staying up, you, crossing your legs is a great way to get knocked over because the, the leg training just wasn't as agile. It's there, but you just don't see a lot of it. Uh, in you know, assorted Chinese and basically Eastern martial arts, you will find a lot more kicking. I would like to know more about African martial arts. I can't speak much to, to uh, African and some of Middle Eastern. I've, I've encountered some Middle Eastern arts, and many of the Middle Eastern arts function very much uh, like Indian fighting styles, like Hin Hindustani fighting styles. I hope I'm using the right term. I mean no disrespect if I haven't. Uh, and again, South American styles usually have more elaborate uh, kicking too. It's really interesting that the, the European mentality was very much more about the upper body. It might have to do with the build of the fighter. I have to think on that a bit. But for my thing is, I want people to be safe. And the safest thing, the biggest way to get somebody hurt, especially when they're just training, are calibration issues. Somebody hit somebody else too hard. Overheating slash overexertion. They're not staying hydrated. They're out in the sun. They're out in the cold. They're not paying attention. It sneaks up on them. Or trips and falls. Trips and falls are the biggest way overall to get hurt. So I tend to te teach people to uh, make sure that their foundation is solid. Uh, the next thing is once they get moving, I say let loose. Now, 
There are individuals that I don't do that to. Those are people with other martial arts knowledge, um, band members, ROTC members, people who've been in the military or ROTC who uh, have experience doing group movement. And that's the other thing that's important. Uh, crossing your legs in single combat is much easier and saner than it is in group combat. What, when you are doing line combat and uh, major uh, events like that, you can't risk tripping because if you fall, you could domino your whole side and get many, many people killed. So there's a, 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 a rigidity to the simplicity of it. Now, uh, I said there's another approach. The other approach is one held by many self-defense uh, instructors and goes to my man Musashi. Well, how, how is your footwork? How do you walk when you sword fight? I walk. Why should I learn to walk a different way? I know how to walk. That is a viable approach if you are balanced and trained and able to do it. What I found is uh, I, it all bled over. And I was walking one day and my buddy Jason was with me. And he said, he pulled, he actually pulled up. He saw me walking across a, uh, a parking lot. So he's doing about 30 and glances over and sees, he goes, it is you. Guy in a black jacket from behind walking across a parking lot. But because I have such a specific uh, gait, how I walk, uh, We okay on that one. We are having YouTube has had problems uh, with recognizing that I'm on. So I am sorry that you had that problem. I need to cop, catch up a couple of these. Uh, that's 100% my teaching style. Start with the stances so you build your root. You got to learn to stand before you can uh, walk. You got to learn to walk before you can run. And you got got to learn how to run before you can lunge. In my opinion. Lunges are overrated. Arnett is back. Foxy can't get on. Your YouTube, her YouTube isn't showing up on the stream at all. On her phone or our web. I'm sorry. Hi, Johnny. Johnny freaking Cage joins us. Size in indecipherable uh, handwriting. It happens to the best of us. Uh, if it helps, since you are likely to write in Portuguese, I probably wouldn't be able to decipher it anyway. Uh... I'm finally here, Jeebus YouTube. No notification, nothing on your direct page. Can't look up the video. Thesis had to link me in. And my name is no longer blue. No longer blue. That's weird. Is that trying to say you don't have a uh, wrench anymore? That couldn't. That would have to be on their end. I'll restart my phone, and I will try to amend that as quickly as possible. I don't know if it was you or my end. Because of marching band shenanigans, I've discovered that I walk with a limp. My The stride on one side is longer than the other. This also makes treadmills a trick. Absolutely. I actually do not ride bicycles very much at all because the, uh, the motions for me to ride a bicycle make it very painful indeed. As Miyaki says, first learn stand, then learn fly. Nature rule, daniel -san, not mine. No wrench. We will fix that. And we're joined by the independent creator directory. That's uh, Joe Bachman. Thank you for coming through the door. Uh, glad you are here. We still have a little bit while. I will get you your wrench back in a moment. That tells me that YouTube is being truly problematic. Uh, I don't think it's telling me I have too many moderators. That wouldn't make sense, but we will see. Of course, I may have annoyed people because I've been very avid in the uh, campaigns to deal with the shenanigans that uh, Wizards of the Coast has pulled, which is off-topic, but topical. So we go, no, I don't need to go there. Thank you, sir. Go here. Uh, well, you're not on your regular channel tonight either. I'm not? 
Did it really bump me? I am. That's what's going on. <sighs> I knew there were some shenanigans. Um, I will have to download and repost this video up to YouTube to my regular channel. I had there were problems when I tried to log on to everything. So first thing that we're going to do. I had there were problems. Yes, echo, echo, echo. Let me fix this. That that's what's going on. It uh it bumped me over to my other channel. So I am so sorry to, to have that. That should fix that and I will repost this after we are done. That I, I see that after you told me that, which is not where it was supposed to broadcast to. I'm sorry. I, I must have may, had some problems. Ding, ding, ding. Know the winner. But um, I will do, I will, uh, when I, I will download this video and I will re-upload it to the Historical Fencing Guild and everything should be rebalanced. And I apologize for any confusion that that caused. <sighs> and your screen keeps stopping and starting but fuzzy. All right, guys. Um, you know what? I think because I'm getting messages from other people trying to get in, something has actually gone technically wrong. And uh, I will have I will have to do something about that. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to call it a night, guys, so that I have the time to fix this. I apologize, but I think the best thing I can do is get this shenanigan straightened out. And uh, I can now see you. I can now see you, Kelly, which surprises me because I know you've been trying. Um, something is going wrong with this broadcast. I will... Yep, yeah, don't forget to tip the host. Guys, thank you. Keep your guard up. Keep fencing. Uh, keep your eyes open. Be kind to yourself and each other. I will be back. Oh, God. And yes, my bags have bags. We will fix this. And hopefully next week everything will be back to normal. People watching the Historical Fencing Guild will find uh, that that is updated in a couple hours because I have to stop this, let it process, download it, and then re-upload it. But we will make it work, okay? Thank you for your patience. I'll, I will see you guys all real soon. Have a lovely evening.